Granny used to tell me all the time Sparks and feet and preparation combined The road been right here all this time But you gotta look with more than your eyes And the small axe Jesse Ryle representing for I Just Star Mindset Rich forever Blessed love, pleasant, good evening, good afternoon. Mindset program, I just time your host. And I want to greet the item in the divine name of his imperial majesty, Emperor E. Selassie I, the first, Empress Men in the first, Holy Emmanuel I, King Selassie I, Ja, Rastafari. Well, welcome beautiful viewers and subscribers one more day above ground as you know life is our ultimate position no matter what go on you don't know so once we have life you know what i mean things are possible said way you know what i mean so give thanks another beautiful day um please remember to um push that like button all right please like the video also share um if the item can um today we have a beautiful um beautiful and touching um program zine for the item and um very touching you understand very sensitive also zine and is a sister from um out of saint vincent a rastafari empress um we have up on a program here today um sister by the name of empress itrician zane um she have a story to tell um a very interesting and touching story um that she want to share with the item zane and um I'm gonna give her the platform, you know, to share her story. You know what I mean? And yeah, let she express herself. Zin. So without no further delay, we want to introduce Empress Itrician to the mindset program. Blessed love and honorable Empress. Yes, blessed love, King. Yeah, very thankful for you having me here on this program today. As you mentioned, my name, Itrician and Silasi the first and um yes very much so very horrific story that indeed um but i would love to share with the people as to the strength that his majesty and her majesty have been given i and i throughout the whole ordeal so yes, I. I give thanks for all the goodness i give thanks for the brother just and getting in connection with the eye for the eye i've been bringing and uh realized that the eye have been bringing some beautiful beautiful knowledge and programs as i said to the people give thanks and i give thanks for be, i give in th i'm giving real very thankful for being on the program at this time very very much so yes i am i'm i'm, I'm uh, it's an honor and a pleasure to have the high here you know the platform is for you know it's for i and i you know so you know it's a great pleasure for have the hype on the platform still so all right yes, um before 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 we, we go into you know the ordeal um just tell me a little bit about the ISF. there's a brief background there and i forgot you know, you know too much but just a, okay. a brief background of the eye self you know um you know why the eye um choose rastafari you know why the i choose that yes, road and thing you know so yeah, that's yes. a, a brief background of the eye still. Okay, yes, I will give thanks, King. Yes, um, 
as if I can say, um, the journey through life as it is, getting to know His Majesty and Her Majesty. After being in the world, uh, lost, you know, given um, that knowledge which was passed on from our parents, mother and father, you know, being in the world, you know, it's, it's a story that, that we all probably one way or the other had encountered with, you know, something that is totally different than, than who we are and something that doesn't really give us the fullness, as you can say, as to who we are. And after going through life, you know, the cycle of life, you know, having given birth to three sons, three sons that was born in Canada and still out there in the wilderness, I was, you know, seeking knowledge, trying to find myself. And See I found myself in an area and situation where I, I had friends with Rasta Bridgerin and Sisterin that would, would have brought that knowledge to me of the king, ancient king, his majesty, I, letting, him, letting me know that him is our king and him is the light and the truth of the world and it's good to look into his majesty and seek his majesty knowledge. And I started to, as a young daughter in Canada, started to sip up and seek knowledge and try to get insights as to my history the black history the current you know start looking at this mm -hmm. from a different level as a people and i found myself getting real close and connection to his majesty in a way and her majesty in a way that i say wait i never know that this energy and the more i research and the more i go deep is the more i see myself and get to find myself as to the reality as to what i woman was facing in the life as a young daughter you daughter and I realized that, yeah, well, this is really I and I business because within I and I, I feel all this energy, knowing that I'm a great woman, knowing that we as a people, our people are great people. And um, I see the effects that was taking place even in my home, my, my, my relatives and mother and father. After getting to know His Majesty, I saw where, you, you know, you get that fight down from family and you get that scorn, that scorn and look down and they say that you, you, you get mad now because how oh, you have a praise a man so, and how you do all these things and, you know, how you love that man. And so I said, yeah, I mean, overstand is a calling that I have to answer to and I shall walk the walk. And after knowing, as I say, walk the walk and get closer to the King and Her Majesty and for a whole new life a whole new being was created out of just the knowledge and the closeness and it, as you say i just and selassie first was born you know Distance. come forward different created by his majesty right in the mystic and in you know cosmic mystic vibration that took place and actually you now as you say now the, the 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 energy the knowledge and the understanding of myself has brought me onto a different level and a different understanding of life where now i i have I've changed my life to a fully plant base where i only utilize things from from the earth and natural food and my children i since i came forward from canada as i said i had three canadian youths i was living there for a while and i've moved back to to saint vincent and um i have now four more youth man you know that was born here now and um so in all, giving birth to seven beautiful, powerful sons, if you thanks. know, that came to know His Majesty and Her Majesty and, as well, and giving thanks for knowing of their self and their mission and their true purpose as to how the knowledge, the truth has related within, you know, to us as a people. Because the truth is there about ourselves and we never really know all them things as only when I and I get to find His Majesty and Her Majesty, I realize like, yeah, full light and full understanding. Of, this, of, of, of myself, of my own self, that I didn't know through the true knowing this, the king, king of all kings. I was able to, you know, move up the ladder, as you will say, and be a better person, and a greater woman, and more understanding, and more love, and more energy. And as I said, it has brought me out in an area where I now couldn't see myself differently. I connect to the to to nature in a great way. I, I make herbal medicine and um, I'm very good at it. Uh, I know herbs is the healing, so I study my herbs well and I've gone on some deep researches and experience with herbs that I've even get to see the herbs that was used, that I was using to help myself, my family and others, where others who were really sick with different sicknesses, you know, 
one to be great one hiv and i was able to help that sister in to get rid of that hiv and where she went back to the doctors and check herself several times and it become inconclusive and then eventually told her that she has no more that virus is dead in her body so from there wow. it's even more more life now more knowledge and understanding of this this life as to who i am and the work that i do just very simple not not pushing myself in any way out there like that mm. but just doing the works as i chat the earth as i chat through life and journey through i help who i can and i the most i will guide me as to who and guide the people into me who who i should deal with and you know do my thing like that so I just want Selassie first, a beautiful person who knows Selassie, who love and honor the, her majesty and re recognize the Godhead, who live a life that is pure and divine, uh, love my people, love the whole of humanity, see no difference in color and race and them things, they don't fight these things, just love humanity. I recognize God and I know good and evil exists in life itself. So uh brother man um just thanking the almighty self for the life and for the experience after all right yes sir yes, I. Thanks. That's the far right. so um so the the the, the i move back to saint vincent and um there there i have four you know four youth man as the i say and you know you're yes, you you're, you're what you consider um as a medical what they would call a medical yes. doctor but the eye the eye is a herbalist yes i i can't see yes man i will say herbalist because of what is just herbs that i will use my first thing if anything my first the first thing that comes to my mind that whenever i see any kind of sickness and anything like that when i consider i want healing and healing is something when you heal you heal you don't already have to come back and have to come look for me after i don't give you or show you what the most i show me that you can use and that you can you don't have to come back is that you heal from that and if there's any other condition but whatever problem that you come forward to me with i'm gonna let you know if i can handle it or not and seeing that the herbs, I trust the herbs because it worked for me and it worked for my family. And I'm able to add strength to others and that is how I get myself, you know, within this to say herbalist because it's just herbs that I will use in my life. I don't really go to pharmaceutical. I don't find pharmaceutical medicine. It is there for convenience, you know, so I understand mm -hmm. that, that the part as, as well as the natural part. So I don't fight no one and no effort that is good as, as to help life and to keep life. I try to work along with everyone with love as, you know, so we set it. We work along with the love and the energy to see life because with, 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 with the most I is life. We never come here for kind of for cut life off, you know, it's, it's to give life and more life. That's what we say, more life, more love, more prosperity to the people, the whole of humanity. True, 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 true. Yes, yes I. I. Yeah, man, that is a reality. <laughs> yes, yeah. I. Yeah, that is a reality. It's really right now the world. The world is suffering from that love. It's love people looking for. A lot of people just miserable because they don't have love, and within themselves, through the, through the, from such time, our history and our culture and our tradition and these things were ripped away from us because over in the West, the West don't give us that fullness as to. Who we are, what we are to be. We're not. We're not taught to be, to be um, free people. We're taught to be dependent and to seek for everything mm -hmm. that we want and everything that we need outside and look for. It. But everything, all the answers, I figure, is within, is within us. Yes, sir. All of the answers once we walk and connect ourselves to the irate, everything is right. Before, it's right before our eyes. We can see it. You understand? Know Life is real. So I dwell with things in a real way, in a very real sense. If I'm coming, if, if I'm dwelling with humanity and mankind, I know my duty with man. I know my duty with humanity, and I know my duty also with my people. Okay, with yes, my sir. people, because we are a people, and we recognize the others, the other nations of the world. But as a black, as I say, a melanated people and, and natural people, force and original people, I, I I give thanks for these things. You know, I give thanks. Yes, sir. I give thanks every time, you know. Yeah, which is right. Yes, man. Yes, my sister. So, all right. Um, Jano, you know, we, hmm. we, we've been we've been reasoning offline, and um, you know, it's dread. 
but yes i i know i know that i want to share what the you know the i have to you know share yes with, man with, I have... with with the masses so all right um talk, talk to me talk to me up you 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 you, you all right, talk to me, my sister. I'm not even going to really ask the Yes, I. Well, uh, yes, I. What I'm going to bring to the eye. Yeah. Yes, yes, brother. Well, my thing is, right, that um, since I've been, uh, as I said, since I've been here and um, I've found myself on, on, on this journey with the most high and I've been living more of a natural, holistic life, um, I, as I said, given birth to four Four you four youths here in St. Vincent and all four came with the name, as I said, Selassie. And all four of my children, I was I was able to the king the guidance to homeschool the the, 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 the the children. I was able to make medicine for them. And since they were born, they never had to return to any doctor for anything because they were perfectly healthy perfectly healthy I, I i took them in one two time because i have friends who are doctors that would just check the the, the the body to make sure the goodie everything is right and they said to me these children are perfect perfect healthy children balanced and everything like that bright very outspoken and strong and you know it's all natural food that i will feed them and natural medicine i will give them a natural love so that works for us as a family and seeing that we are Afrocentric and that we are rooted, we 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 connected to our roots. We do things out here as Africans, the ancient Africans would have would, would have done. So it's like a connection and a and a movement is a is a movement from one stage to another stage, and it's okay. happening right before our people. Yeah. Okay. See, see, yes. So, yes. Yes. Please. Uh, so um. What, what what happened now, brother? If I can say to you, after I know the, the change is, is is heavy because even in my country, a lot of people will look at me and they will question me as to how I dress and as to who I am. Why why am I always wrapped up in my long skirt and I'm always covered and um the way that I eat and everything like that. The people will question me. So I had a little run-ins. Um, let, let me, what time was it? I can't remember. If it was like three years ago before my baby passed away. I had a baby that passed away, if I can say right. The fourth son, I Savior Selassie, the first, the fourth one that was born here, yeah, my last son. He passed away, okay? And it was a very suspicious move as to how him passed. It it left it, it give us it gave the family a kind of shock that everyone everyone just kinda life kinda just kinda stop we will say stop it and hold do we live in so, we still have to be holding because why 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 yes, brother, go why, ahead. why you say um why why you why you say it's suspicious what 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 would lead um, you to that well con- well if i can if well yes i if i can say to the people um my story really and truly right now i am facing something that i don't think any mother and any father or anyone god knows will want to be able to face this it is it is something that is so it is so painful my brother it's as if i didn't know his majesty and our majesty and have the love of the brethren like the item and the sister in them i don't know how i myself would have stood up to this thing because it's like getting it's like the face of the devil, as we will say. The face of Satan himself, him shum face, clear to me, right up in my face, face to face with the enemy. Because in 2020, as I was mentioning, I have four sons that was born in St. Vincent here and three in Canada. My last four youth man. The one, the last one being name, name, call him, I save you, Selassie the first, born on August 16th. Of 2020 he it was a different it was a different time and different moment due to the fact that him was the first child that I was I was told that I will have to be given a cesarean section due to I was suffering from something as I said not suffering but I had a condition called placenta previa which would allow the baby to be like more stuck on enter through the canal and then it would have to do an emergency c-section 
And for whatever reason, to allow that to happen is for reasons that I, I would have found out after, you know? Because I never really loved the thought of like get, going through cesarean because I know with the cesarean section, it's a limitation as to how much children you, you, will, you will have. And for me, I love children. So I would have had as many as, as I could have, no matter the time. I would have as much as I can because I love children. You know, so after yes, re realizing that my body, things change right there upon me all of a sudden, and then I was experiencing this condition. I realized that, you know, it's going to change for me. And I was willing to do what I had to do at that time because of the situation, the bleeding, found myself bleeding while I was about to close to the pregnancy. It wasn't even the fullness because I still was a few weeks into the fullness, which is the nine months. But I went, as the, as the situation starts and I realized the bleeding starts, I went in, checked myself into the emergency, went and I found out that I was going to uh, have a situation because of the bleeding called placenta previa, which I, I, I did research while I was in the bed there, going to it myself after the doctor told me and I had a greater understanding as to what was really happening. So I was comfortable still within myself, having the knowledge as to this is what was happening and causing the bleeding. So then after I went into the, the, the main hospital, which is called the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital, which is the public hospital for the whole land, big hospital, major hospital. I went in there now and went into the ward where you know where you will be able to meet up with the doctors and specialists who will be able to tell, okay, from here what, what's going to happen and what we will do. So yes, they decided that they're going to do an uh, emergency cesarean section. And that was, I went up to, I went to the hospital, say around seven in the morning that day, which was Sunday, the 16th of August of 2020. Sunday morning, early, I went in, I, I got up because I was in the Grenadines, which is a, another part of the island off of the mainland St. Vincent, which is a little Grenadine island and Union Island. So in the morning I was there and I realized, as I said, bleeding and reach my find myself getting a ride from the from the Coast Guard, even going to the Coast Guard, the St. Vincent Coast Guard, the police them came into that land to get me because there's a like a resort. So it's my boat and plane get to them lands. You can't get to them lands without boat or without the plane. So the Coast Guard was called in for me emergency to bring me up to the mainland and everything like that and keep check we go and we check keep track of everything which is now i went in and did an emergency cesarean section and a cesarean an emergency um scan 3d scan ultrasound to see what was really happening and you know so i right there and then me get, I, I got to find out that i was giving birth to a son I, I i get to see the baby for the very first time and um the the one that did the brethren that did the, the test the scan on me he, he looked at me and i asked him certain questions i did ask him if everything was okay with the baby and he showed me yes he just showed me that everything is perfect with this baby and it's very quite surprising that everything is okay with him because usually in your situation like in a situation like this the the baby usually be in distress and the mother and but the eye it is something strange because the eye is here in the eye normal proper persona. The eye have no worry and I can see the eyes in tune with what is going on and seeking questions while the eye bleeds so much. And the baby within your womb, I'm looking at him and everything is proper with the baby. From him crown to him feet, it's like the man just ready to come out and him say, Mama, it is it is amazing as well because him the baby is like him just stay in, in heaven because him, him there's no distress. Usually, baby will be in distress, and for the amount of bleeding and the vibration, the, the moment that you yourself doesn't have an understanding as to what really going on, but yet you remain so calm after seeing so much blood coming from you, and you never move from yourself to say that you get scared. He said, "This is what makes it good that all is well with the baby, and all is well. It's just for you to go now and to get them to take that baby out." So everything was right and I had a nurse by my side as well when the man was telling me these things as to the baby is perfect and she saw for herself that the baby was perfect. Then I proceed now, then take me back, they took me back to the hospital now, the major hospital and they said around like that was around like say, 11 something, 12 something, so around 2, 2 something, they, 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 
around 12 something sorry around 12 something they took they took me to the theater and did the surgery cut me and you know take out the youth man and everything like took him out and so um everything went well with me everything went well with me and them say everything went well with him but i was asleep and the father was right outside of the door where they were doing the surgery and when he came when when i was finished doing what they did they came out of that room but amazing amazing <laughs> brother when them came out of the room and they saw because the, the the team of doctors now that was there present in the room with me when my eyes were closed, was closed was a team of doctors that i knew seven months before prior the baby being born because my other son before which is ocean Celacid, my third son there him had a little condition with him breathing so i took him in to see them and i met this team of doctors young doctors and they said to me they start questioning things because ocean stayed in the hospital for over what 10 days in, a, in the hospital the one before the baby and i was sleeping my whole family moving to the hospital <laughs> my other two sons and the dad and the, and, and the, the king man we all moved into the hospital with the baby because we family so close we so knitted brother that one don't move without one we always together so now that the little baby that ocean was in the hospital it come like me and my husband and my other children moved in we were having lunch breakfast and dinner in the hospital because i'm not leaving the baby i wasn't leaving my son and the father wasn't leaving him as well See ya. so we were bathing there yeah we were bathing there eating there and the children turned to take a playground in a sick place and i'm maturing them they run and run playing and giving the other children life and strength and then me decide now that okay i want knowledge as to what was really happening to the to the youth man that was there and i look at the work and everything that they give to my son i was taking account i was writing down in my book and i was studying and i was getting knowledge as well you know so i told them after i was there and i saw them giving him certain medicine because they, they consulted me first before they give him anything because they know that i'm a natural woman and I'm a naturalist that dwell with certain medicine. They will come to me and the father and ask us if it's okay for them to do this and to do that, which I give consent when necessary. And if something wasn't fitting, I would refuse. They even um, kind of get like had a problem with me as to the way I eat the natural food and I don't eat uh, meat and I don't drink Coke and Pepsi and nothing like that. And they, they were eating their pork and their pizza and the the doctors there drinking up the coke and everything i mean never have no problem with it we say because everyone is free to choose but my problem is then when they came to me now and asking me um or telling me that your children will be mad at you your children will get vexed with you because you're not immunizing your children them and you're not doing a whole heap of things with your children them how you think your children are gonna be vexed with you for what you're doing and me say no don't get so personal that is my life my children them cannot get vexed with me for when they're my care i care for them and when they get older and they're able to make their decision they can make that for themselves i never find them and even as children right now they're free to choose once it's right i just assist and guide them through it Mm -hmm. So my family is a different family people, you know, I, I just pass in through, just, you can do your work with the baby and I, I don't have no problem, but my life, you don't have to worry about that. And they That's say, well, so they start making the little joke and, you know, I Trishan and say, Lassie, and I know that my life was like a, a, a trouble, like a, it like it just touched that group of young doctors. Anyways, in the, coming to the end of the 10 days, I realized that when my son was in there too, I realized that, you know what? In here, it's like they're giving him a medicine, and every medicine you give him, him get a side effect, and it making him sick. You give him one, and him, I'm, and him get trash, right? And I, so me, say, I'm gonna take my baby out. I'm gonna go to the administrator and sign the baby out from you all. Give thanks for whatever you have done, but I figure from here I can take it up, you know. So they say, well, okay, instead of signing him out, we go send him out. You don't have to go to the administrator. We gonna sign him out because you can, we trust that you can take care of him home. And I brought him home, and they. They'd, I took care of him, me and the, and the dad, and, and Osha and the baby. Ne you never have to go back. When them see him, them always shout him and say, yo, the baby, give thanks for the eye strength, the eye overcome in such a great way. And whatever the eye had required, which them tell me him needed some B12 shot because him not eating meat and them thing. They, usually, we as far as our B12 will be low because we're not consuming that. But we can get our B12 from natural sources like the sea moss. You have the nutritional yeast and you have it in certain vegetables that you can still get a little, you know, and from your natural spring water. 
that's coming from the earth. Because back in the day, that is the water that man never used to eat. They never had a flesh liberty, especially our people. Them, they rely upon the natural food and things from the earth. And the water, when you drink the water from the spring, the natural spring, in that, there's a little bit of earth. In every bit of the water, you will find the earth. And that is what will give you the B12. That is where, that's a great source of B12 spring, natural spring water from the earth. You know, so Pause. we know there's other sources rather than meat. Knowing that the meat, we don't we don't eat meat because for the many reasons that the meat, most of the meat, it's flesh and it need antibiotic and certain thing to keep that and to preserve that. So there's preservative in the meat. And so, you know, lots of things we try to avoid with the chemical, putting it into our bodies. So when they bring all them little medicine by the hospital and they start giving the ocean all them medicine, I start seeing that he's being affected. I took him out, me and the father, we took him out. And him never had to go back and him never had no problems again and nothing like that. So then seven months after, I hear, hear his electrician Selassie first again back in the hospital now, giving birth to a baby that they didn't even know that I was pregnant. Because remember, I never really, I don't go into them like that. I do my own prenatal care. At home and everything always go well. Always See. through the guidance of the most high. So now, my brother, now that me, as I say, enter power there now to have this baby. I know it was the same team of doctors. The same team of doctors that showed up into the room where I was giving birth. A few of them, they claim that usually when you're in the emergency, given emergency section where you're going to have a cesarean section just in case of anything was to go wrong they will have the NICU doctors on call right there so they can actually do whatever they have to do and rush them to the to the NICU if it's anything because it's a cesarean section as emergency anything can go on mm -hmm. but everything as I, I was there and I, I woke up and I woke up I, I was told by my husband by, the, by, by my partner and by the doctors there that everything was well everything was perfect with the baby everything went really good with him and uh, they told the dad there because he was right outside of that room so they told him everything was perfect you know everything went well and everything with the baby then when my husband he said when he was outside of the door while i was down he saw one of the doctors uh, that we knew holding the baby and another one walking with her arm um, what is it? A little can that you will, what you call them, the tank that you will give him oxygen, little oxygen. Mm. And while he was, while he came out of that room, while my husband was right outside of that door, the doctor that know him, my husband, she was passing him straight with the baby. It is my partner that, the rest, my king man that stood up and asked about me to say, hey, um, I Trisha went in there to have the baby. And I'm out here and I, I don't know what's going on. I see you guys walking. They never, they never came and introduced the baby to the man. They passed the man straight and nothing was wrong with the baby. So then when him go and him go, him stood up and him got closer to them. Him, him, him see the little blanket and the blanket kind of blow off the baby face. And him saw himself in the hand. So they said to him, yes, yes, Rasta, this is your baby here. The mother is quite fine and he's perfect. This is your baby. They wasn't telling him and they were passing him, sitting right there without saying anything. And she knew that that was the father of the child. She knew that was my partner outside waiting for me to come out and for the baby, for him to see the baby when the baby was born. And she was passing him straight like an example, covering the baby face, going downstairs with the baby. When my partner decided to stand up and ask so about me, and then she said, "Oh, oh, oh, Ras, yeah, here is your baby." Then my partner said to her, "Here, hey, Selassie, first live, because right then, then obviously the man will be thinking like, what, what, what's going on?" And we, from before we had dwelling with these same doctors, and we never really connect with the energy because we see the energy was fighting against what we believe in and what we know. So, brother. <laughs> This one so had. Why, why, when they why? took my baby downstairs. Yeah, go on, sir. Yes, man. When they took that baby downstairs now to say, they told the dad, well, he asked them the question, Wait, okay, so we're going with the baby now. Isn't he supposed to be handed over to me? So, well, no, we're going to clean him up downstairs and wipe him up properly and everything like that. And then put it, observe him a bit, like, you know, a little bit of observation and make sure everything good with him. And when mommy get up, Mommy will get to see him and he will go up and meet mommy. So everything good, rest the man. 
So he said when he was there, when I was out, they came and they asked him if we find one of the, the same one that took him downstairs, a doctor that we know. She said to him, if we find anything in his blood, because we're going to test him and everything like that. And if we find anything in his blood, would you guys give him antibiotics? Because we know the item don't really dwell with that. But the father said to them, yes, I, if anything is wrong with the baby and necessary, you know, need that, I think I Trisha will be okay with that. She wouldn't have a problem. She's out right now. But if there's a problem with that baby, it's not a problem to be able to give him um, whatever, you know, she soon get up and we will make that decision. And if you need to go ahead before then it's necessary, you guys have to do what you have to do. But we would like to know. You can talk to me and let me know if anything is wrong with him. I said, no, nothing never wrong with him. We just go do the test and make sure everything is okay with him. Nothing is wrong with him. But the mother will get to see him when she soon, when she get up. And then within a two, three hours time, around four or five o'clock, then I was up from the from the jog, a little bit drifted and throat all dry out because you don't know them have the holes in your throat and them telling me we can't drink water. So like a frustration when we rise up, now me see with the baby. And them say, oh, the baby downstairs, them just observing that everything is good with him. The daddy tell me, don't worry, Trish. Don't worry, Trish. And the baby cool, man. Me see, me, me see the son. Me see my son and him. Everything is blessed with him, you know. Him just downstairs and them don't show me that when you overcome a little bit, them, I go, they will bring him upstairs for the eye to love up and kiss up and, you know, have him to hold. Because I mean, never see him since him come out. And, you know, me excited. Me still want to see my son. Me happy that we we gone through such a crazy ordeal and still conquer, and still make it through imperfect and I perfect. So me was glad. Happy to hear the news. So when me then I'm upstairs you now with all the other mothers and the ward now waiting for my baby. For every mother they have the baby close and kissing and cuddling. So now I'm there around six, seven, six o'clock after the baby done born in and did it. I I waiting now to see where I'm I will love for see the little one and you know to hold him. Then my husband they tell they said to me because my partner had to clear the floor. So he said he's going home. And he done show me that when when he's got when he's gone home, they, to, they told him it's okay, they're going to bring up the child. While I was there now, I start questioning and say, well, that's our whole life to see the baby. Is it okay for me because I can walk? Now you tell me, me have to get up and walk. After I have to see serum section, I cannot lay down in the bed. Right after you tell me, I have to get up and walk. And when me really try to get up, me realize this, this thing terrible. I mean, you know, first time experience in a serum section, it's not easy. And Miss Ben, me try to get up still, my brother, and ask Jaffa for the strength, and me walk around perfectly. I mean, they walk in there. And them say, well, I Trisha, and your blood look a bit low, you know, so you mightn't be able to go downstairs by the baby to see him. But it's like about 10, 10, 10 feet away, you know, 10 footsteps, 12 footsteps from the room where I was staying to the other room where the baby was, you know, where the baby was staying, you know. And they said to me, um, well, to your blood low, you okay, and get to see the. They say, well, you okay, I see him tonight, you know. So me say, why? They say, you just can't see him. Me say, but why? They say, well, your blood low. One of the nurse who was into this whole nastiness, because eh? it's a nasty thing they did. She was one of the nurse, because they had the team. They already set nurses and doctors to sacrifice the sicker baby. And I felt the energy. But I just had to hold myself because I realized that they have me in the hand. Because usually, once I push my child, is to put my child on my chest and me tell them, it's okay from there. I will come out of the hospital every time the next day. Every time so, I walk so out because I'm when, good. When, baby when, is good. When, when you say sacrifice, what 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 do what, what you mean by that? Well, well, they already knew what they were about to do to him. It it, it, it is it was set for him. He was not to make it and to live. It was set for him from the very beginning. From I went in there, and these people knew that I was coming there, and that was in my that was my condition that I had to go under the knife. I don't know that they were gone. I I felt the energy that something negative. I heard that these people was around the baby was gonna happen because from the prayer would be before with the child before ocean they already given me an energy because I what if I can see one of the doctors there when I was there with ocean she said to me one of the big doctors she came up to me she said oh this is a spiritual thing we're going on with this child because we can't really find anything inside of him you know nothing we tested him and we ain't find nothing really going on with him but um, we're going to run these antibiotics and then give them real antibiotics when nothing never found them and they never and they see me. I tell them, I think you don't think this is too much antibiotics for him. Then the little youth man, my son Ocean, right behind the back of his head, him develop a bump 
like a water bump, like him head bun, like fire. So me say, how come the baby head bun out? From whatever you're giving him, the baby head is burned, like a burn in him ears. And no, we did, he did right here, nothing burn him. How come is the medicine too strong for him? And they said, no, well, he ain't come here with that. I said, but he, you mean he ain't come here with that? He came here perfect and the item know is right here. Because look, he developed in church and you tell me these are things that he would develop here. So I said, she said, okay, well, just put some some ice, some bag, ice bag on the baby head and everything like that and see if it will go down. And one of the big doctors said to me, the main one, she said, listen to me, mommy, you're looking at your baby? I said, yes, I. She said, the baby brain is what already, he brain don't turn water. Me said, how can his brain be water? When him there breathing and thing, if his brain was water, how can him function? I said, lady, you're talking stupidness. She was one of the main doctors, the big doctors that work in the hospital. So right there, I realized she come with some kind of negative energy. Oh, you go tell me my baby brain is water. I'm a youth man, get over proper and everything and out to the talking proper. But she wanted me to like accept something because she was saying to me, Mommy, I want to share something with you. It's like the baby, your baby head already, the baby brain is already water. And I said to her, No, you're talking stupidness. And right there, here she all right. So you know that she was playing some game with me. She was testing me and I had to st stand up to her. But then I realized, I said, see these people, they're not really nice because they're not really goodness. They're promoting a feeling, a negative energy. Mm -hmm. So when I saw them now with the little baby for me, then I realized, I said, chapter, this ain't gonna be good at all. That's why I was saying the sacrifice. So now while I was there, my brother, and I gave birth to the little boy and they took him downstairs and all that and them tell me now, I can't see the baby for no reason. Every other mother, reality and life, every other mother and baby there, and the mothers and all mothers, when we go through these things, we will tend to look into each other problems because all baby there is a small room. All of us dwelling in one washroom, one bathroom in St. Vincent. All the women cut and all the women blood bleeding together in the one washroom. It's one washroom, one place where we eat. So we become, there's like a family now, all the daughters, because all of us who go to cesarean section and who give birth, whose baby died, we there together as the mothers. So we feel a different connection to each other and each other baby will show the concern. So when they know that they say, Rasta, with your baby, me and another young lady were bed, side bed. Her baby was in the same room that my baby was staying in, in the front of the NICU. Her baby was good. She said that to me. Mine was good. I told her to her. So both of us would have gone down and visit the baby. And she would have visited her daughter and both of us sat in together. And the same thing that was happening to her baby, it was the same thing that was happening to mine, which is now they just have them there looking at them. No. <laughs> After the third day, you now we realize they have the baby there and they're telling me, oh, you have to test your blood test, you know. Me say, but it's three days and my baby kept me can't put my breast to my baby mouth. When me know mm -hmm. me, me, it's the same life, never mind me never come in to do blood work and all them things. Eh? They I know me have my records and everything like that. And it's my rights to give. Because usually when them tell me that, me still put the breast in my baby mouth because me have the baby in the bed with me. But this time they have him downstairs in the NICU. So it's a different arrangement and they have jips, like a, a jip in his hand. One line running from a bag of glucose, which I read. Glucose, because I read what they were putting in my son's body. One jip in his hand, telling me they were just waiting until my blood work was done. Then they would have brought him up and took him off of the jips and I would have given him the breast. But after three days now, I upstairs and I visiting him up and down and I'm just having pan the sugar water. I find this thing really strange. Real change because not because of blood. You're, you're moving very slow towards getting me the blood test so I can. Because you did a blood test for the baby right after the baby born. You get back the result the same day within an hour. Because me have all the record. All the record they give to me was to bring back to them, but I never took it back to them. They gave me these records in an envelope which I found after the baby passed away, you know, because I just put the letters away. Whatever they gave me, I wasn't playing with them with the games. So I said, you know, whatever they give to me here and whatever letter they place in the bag, I don't have no time to return nothing to them. I will just hold it and put it in the bag and dwell with my son. So 
um <coughs> when 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 did the baby pass away at the hospital uh no well i'm, I'm gonna let the yeah, end on this one now so now that when after the baby came up now you remember now within the three days time now they already told me that within that time i would be released when they brought, bring, bring, bring him upstairs on the main ward when they brought him upstairs they said okay well you will you're released you're gonna get to go home you're discharged and then now they said they're gonna test the baby the baby blood um sugar level to make sure that everything is okay with him so he can go home with me the day because i was discharged and they was gonna discharge him as well but when they check and they tell me now they check the the, the thing they say oh you're not going home today you know you're not going home because the baby sugar is is dropping you know the sugar and yeah, the sugar for be up and if the baby sugar dropping you cannot go home until we get that started out so me say eh, after all them touch me i never feel good wrong them i never happy i never feel good because it wasn't nothing good in there it was just like a bad energy just a bad vibration coming at me never felt too good you know so anyways miss okay then if it's necessary for the baby health again i don't mind i'll stay in here i'll stay as long as you want me to once it's for the baby's health so okay you're gonna monitor we're gonna try and get the sugar up you will breastfeed as you can and we'll be able to give him that glucose to keep him on in between you breastfeed him so after a while within a few days we're gonna see how he's gonna do on the breast only so we'll take out the ivy with the sugar and you will just breastfeed him and if his sugar maintain then the i can take him home so i say well it sounds good so I make sure me eat a proper and dwell with myself and pump my breast and all them things they pump the breast make sure that i'm getting enough and put enough things in my goodie natural at the time that i could have you know because i would know how to work my thing through the eye with which i will guide me and I did all of that. I did all of that. And while I was there, it was a whole story with them, like fighting me down. They come in with some negative energy because what they said to me, they said that to me. One of them, the nurses said, well, the baby is perfect. The baby is perfect and um, differently than the sugar. Everything is good with him. And usually all of my children before the ones that I had there, here, they said to me, um, we know that you don't take the vaccines with the other children because they usually give a, a shot at the hospital an antibiotic shot and they will tell you this is just in case anything more to develop then the shot is there to help out and them thing there so i said to them well usually i have the other three children and i um when you guys tested them and everything was okay i never even take that shot so you don't need to give them the, the shot i will know what to do and what to eat and be able to pass it through my breast milk to the baby so if everything is okay as you're saying i refuse that shot just like my other children i refuse and they came the nurse asked me she was gonna go and just shock the baby and i said to her what are you doing nurse she's like oh i'm gonna give him a, a shot and i said what is that shot for she said just in case of anything developing his body now so well, no my other children that i had here yeah, i refused that so i don't need that if you saying you guys tested him and everything is okay i don't need that so she's like okay no problem that is your right you know you don't have to and then she came back another day and she said to me she said watch um i want to give the baby this thing here I said, but no i said to her nurse if everything is okay with the baby and just in case of anything i overstand but with my other children i refuse that because once nothing is wrong with them i don't need to put that in and everything good <sighs> she said all right all right titration all right so we realize that something kind of changed based on how they're moving but i can't know because i still have to take what they're saying to me then i realized now the 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 hand they had the chips in the hand still they maintain the chips in him hand up to the time and i realized the little boy hand was swollen as big as a ball big big because the chips never going in we realized when we check the baby he said yo doctor the baby hand is swollen here you know where the gyps is and it look like it's rotten like it starts to infest now fester up so you guys gonna have to take this tube out of the baby hand because i'm not gonna allow my baby hand to bust up fat so and rotten up so i said take it out take it out so they took it out and they realized yes the baby hand too fat and whatever they took that out <sighs> boy brother after they took that thing out of the, uh, his hand they had some trainee trainee children trainee doctors youth that they have coming in choking this baby like over a hundred times choking him trying to get this vein remember he's a small he was a small baby as well just five pounds and some 
right six pounds i think exactly five pounds so i'm going to six pounds and they, they have these training doctors students choking this baby and when this baby will cry until this baby pass out in my hand literally drop out and they're telling me i must hit up his face and try and get him back up again so he could get choked again and when i fight to get the baby back up because this baby is sugar is low already you know so this baby actually passing out in my hand you know so me saying well listen to me no man how come you guys choking him choking him like that i don't feel too good about that he just crying and when he's tired he created he lick out he has no kind of you have to hit his face and try wake him back up you know when they don't choke him the amount of time and all stu- all the students them taking chance to choke and try again so me tell them i went to the room and i knocked the door and i said listen to me pass up my baby none of you don't do these things if until you guys can find somebody professional enough to give my baby the iv for put back in that yeah them none of the item touch my youth so they come and they push the baby back in my hand so i don't know it's a war they push the baby back on me like chum son in my hand and telling them just leave the baby alone don't touch the child and all them things so me inside you crying out to jaffa say what kind of thing is this aya what kind of place you have me you know i don't feel good at my son i know my son is going through something but let me just go to still then after that no them they, you know the day and one of the doctors them and the same team you know they know they realize well yeah I just, and they, one of them come to me and tell me yo I just, and, you know this man and i have satan in me all in the morning when we just rise up she and couple of them the young one i have i i just and i have the devil in me this morning so i said well that well if you have if you have the devil i have here Celeste, the first lady me and said yeah them she's like no i just feel like telling you so i said well you could say so but i feel the energy of the devil so you free up yourself wow. so while i was in there they were, they were they were coming at me this is why i say no i know this thing is is real so after that now seven days now and them did the tests and everything like that they sent me out they sent out me and the baby seven days they put me in number six bed number 16 bed that where they were they were constantly watching me number 16 bed he was born on the 16th which is all them number is seven if they took us in there they kept me in there for seven days every number that played out was seven around my life seven just pure seven seven days before i go to 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 the unit and on December seventh he died. So it's just PS seven brother. Me don't know something different. This is something beyond me and beyond my family what we could handle. So I know this have to be the works of the most high. Right? Yes I so now when them send home the youth man, you remember them don't have the youth man in there and them don't claim that they, they did all these tests on him behind my back because I didn't know of it. They sent me out just with the sugar. That was what I was told and everything was good. And they told me to bring him back in so that the next day after sending me home on the Sunday, bring him back in the Monday and to bring back a letter that they gave me. And I realized one of the doctors was saying to me, she hold, she held the letter in her hand. She said, I Trishan, are you going to bring back this letter here before I put this in your hand? And I was so happy to get out of the place. I'm telling you with my belly cut and everything and all the drama and trauma. I said, yes, lady, just give me the letter. I will just bring it back. If you want to keep it, you can keep it, you know. But she said, no, I have to give it to you and you will bring it back. And you will take it out front to the clinic. Make sure you bring back this letter here. You hear me? So me say, yes, 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 you're sure. Me say, yes. But it's after my baby that I realized why they wanted back that letter. Because in that letter that I placed in my baby bag, when I took the baby home and I took, I put the letter in the bag, I never looked back in the bag. Because I just wanted my son out to be able to give him what I know that would have helped him and get him strong and to bring him forward from whatever energy the world dwelling with him. Just give the youth my love and offer him up to, to the most high God. And I saw what they were doing in there. And when I came home now, I heard, I listened to the stomach. I heard like, um, like a little air, like, gas in his belly so i said how come he's so gassy already but i realized that's probably the days that he wasn't really eating and they have him under sugar he would have been gassy i didn't get to breastfeed him as i wanted to so anyways um we roll me and the, the king man and we took our son after seven days we went back to the grenadines where we would have been doing our business down on the islands there and where I could have gotten some rest and peace. So I said, I'm just going to rest. And if there's anything, when the baby reach about three months, if any, if everything goes, you know, everything well with him and everything, I would take him, I would have taken him back to the doctor now in Union Island, which is a good, which, which is a good friend still, 
the doctor he was not too bad he was a kind man and he was over he had a great understanding and he actually he respected my life my way of life he never had no trouble with me being who i am so he gave me a total different energy and he was the one that told me that i was having the placenta previa when everybody was really scared he was the one that stepped up and you know showed me that everything would be okay as well and when I went back now, as I said, to Union Island with the baby, them discharged us and everything like that. I never took, I never take the baby back into them the next day. I said, no way. I want to take him back next day for what? You just released me Sunday. My belly cut down. I mean, I don't even have right. It's raining and wet. I said, I know what I can do. I, I don't really tie myself up like that. Even with my other children wants to send me home. I had no need to come back. Make sure that the youth is healthy and that's, that's, that's all I need for you guys to tell me if everything is good with them. And then I go home and I, I walk with it from there. You know, so when they sent me home now and I took this letter and I placed it into the bag, the baby bag. I never looked back to that. I just concentrated on getting my son held up and strength, getting him big, feeding him up and everything like that, loving him up, giving him the sunshine and everything with the eyes and just keeping up because I have this experience before. So after three, first month, I, I realized he was sucking and eating, sucking, sucking. He wanted the breast more than you. So I'm saying like maybe he's extra hungry because then the way he sucked the breast and, you know, I said, well, yo, this youth man have a good appetite, but him sucking, sucking like him never really satisfied. So I gave him a little supplement as I reached closer to three months. We start giving him a little supplement. Um, what is it? Uh, supplement milk that I would make for him. A doctor say be special that you make a newborn formula that include a little bit of sea moss, a little bit of this and a little bit of that, which is natural, all natural stuff. And he took it really well and he loved it and it was good for him. I saw him sucking, eating well. But all of a sudden, my brother, which, which is like a few days before the day that he passed away, like the Friday, I noticed him sucking the breast very low. I said to the king, man, him, him, him doesn't have that strong suck. And I realized him much more quiet. Yes, he's crying. But then in his time, he would just get very quiet. So I said, I'm going to have to take this child back in because from the beginning, I don't like what I saw. And I don't know what went on with these people. And I never trusted the energy because of what I saw that they were doing it wasn't the ordinary thing and you know the the, the energy that they gave me was not right so i know they, they never even came to me and said like okay this is what happened when the baby was being born they never said nothing everybody just kept their mouth silent and no matter if i asked question they wasn't giving me answers they were just kind of hiding everything from me so then i said okay all right then people i can't trust them when they Within the three month time, as I said, the day before the Friday, the Saturday, when my youth, the, the little youth there, I realized that he wasn't sucking as much. So I went down now to the pharmacy, which is the in Union Island, the little place I was, and I, I, the, the administrator for the clinic there. I asked her. I said, um, baby, because she knows me well. It's a small community, and I tried to, as I said, I, I, I show love to everyone. My spirit is so beautiful because it's the spirit of the Most High that dwelleth in I. So I give them people just natural love. So the administrator herself, she said to me, don't worry, Aitrishan. When you're ready, bring the baby down and just make sure you give him this and that and don't worry up yourself about nothing. Because I was keeping in contact with the, 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 the people, the personnel that I can get certain knowledge from, mm -hmm. you know, medical personnel. And... She said to me, everything is okay. Everything will be okay. Even if him cry, it's okay for baby to cry and everything. Nothing wrong with the boy. All the others, okay. He good. And then one day now, which is, was the, the, the Monday, I went down town in the city to do my little business to drop some medicine off and everything like that. And the, the dad was home. He was setting the water in the sunshine. You know, we put up the water in the islands and put the, the bath water out to get sun and everything for giving my son bath. And while like when I came home now for the lunch time there, came home from the from the journey, I went, I went, wash up my hands and clean up myself now and say, I'm gonna go into the bed and give the baby some breasts and everything like that. Some love before you bathe him. When I entered the room, I look at my baby. I saw the baby, he was looking really strange. Like his mouth was like almost fixed. So I said, what? We're going on this. I rushed in the bedroom and then I realized he was not breathing. He was struggling for his breath. So I called the king man. I said, yo, king man, the baby in here is struggling, struggling for his breath. So he said, yeah, we never really noticed. And we never, you know, it was there all the time proper. So then we realized that 
we had to be, you know, walk the king man, rush to the bed and start performing the CPR and him blowing breath into him and pumping while I made the call to the emergency people and ask friends to come, a friend to come and pick me up and drop me. Cause right they know, you don't know the adrenaline rushing. My baby is not breathing. Everything mm. ain't seems right. So it's like everything hitting me right there and then. Couldn't even focus as to what was happening. I don't know. I do like what I see in the baby. His body changed almost instantly. Him, him, him just transform. Like him get bony. Him suck, him suck right in. Like within the time, him just start to struggle on the body. Just start to transform right there. And then so I say, what can this be? That could just hit the baby just like that all of a sudden. Throwing him down, you know, allowing him to fight and struggle for breath. What can this be? And then when I went to the clinic in Union Island, they said to me, um, the baby, the baby, he looked like he would make it, you know, mommy. He said, we're going out, what happened to him? I said, I can't tell. I leave him, look at this morning, I left him beautiful and good. He was a bit dull and this, by this evening, the man looked like the man, like the man being to war, like him whole body just suck out one time. It's like, so I said, nah, this is strange. I just had to hold myself, brother, man. I said, nah. Never before this ever happened to me. Then I realized them saying like, okay, the baby, him fighting for him, breath, him struggling, but we not, we don't have any equipment down in the down in the grenadines here in the clinic to no help oxygen. him. There's an equipment that, yes, them never have some tube they need to put in to frame up. Them say them never have a tube, some tube they need to put inside. So me say you say in the in mainland Vinci you will get that and them could free up and they would have they would have been able to work on him once they get the breath catch because remember him fighting him pulling 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 he just pulling but there's no there's no breathing he just pulling in and fighting to like someone who's trying to catch the breath then it's like the breath shut off from you somebody have a bag over your head and you're fighting for catch the breath so it was like that I just fighting for almost two hours and a, I asked mm -hmm. my baby to hold on because said don't leave me now because I don't want and the little thing just a fight and Rasta, the little boy was just fighting for his life, brother. Fighting. When I say fight, you know, man, the man was fighting. The man didn't want to go. I saw him. I, I knew he didn't want to go. So then after me say, last, last year, I, you know, I feel it. Cause I never faced death before. And then with him, I never, see, never even see a dead person up close, Rasta, all my life. We stayed away from that, you know. Even my grandma passed. I, I was in Canada and I, I never moved. Just know that grandma passed and I couldn't bring myself to that to be. I never really would have wanted to face a dead person. That was like my greatest fear, you know, within me. And then to see my baby coming to that and my baby was just sucking on my breast and still they was there. And to know that I see something happening that is so strange that I'm transformed from this stage to that stage so quickly. Then I realized I said, nah, this ain't normal. This ain't normal. But I never be normal. Something went wrong. And then right there when I was coming up now from the Grenadines on the plane, it's just like a voice said to me, watch uh, over the ocean. And the nurse was there with the tank, get the, the oxygen, giving him pump in the back because he couldn't breathe on his own. I had to use the pump bag. And while I was there in the air, Rasta man crossing the ocean, a voice said to me, watch, mommy, touch the baby head and tell him it's okay. I said, no, I tell him myself, even the doctor watched me by myself, just looking through the window and say, no, she, she want to know why I say no. But the irate, so watch, tell you, man, it's okay. I just shouldn't tell him it's okay. I said, nah, man, it ain't okay, man. Then I touch the youth man head in front of the doctor, the nurse and I said say savior it's okay it's okay I just found myself saying that it's okay and I rubbed the baby head then when we reached mainland St. Vincent and the plane landed on the ground that doctor took up the baby the nurse to her ear and she listened and she she rolled her eyes she made a, a look with her eyes and she never said anything to me and while we there driving in, in the ambulance towards going towards the the hospital now she i saw the the doc the nurse with the baby and the baby rolling out of the nurse hand for jap on the ground mr nurse you're going to drop the baby she said yes i just and hold him i'm about to faint and pass out so i gripped the baby from her arms i gripped yes i i gripped the bag i put the tank between my legs and the ambulance was driving so crazy flinging everything everywhere 
and I was trying to she told me to give her a bag she said she shouldn't need a bag to vomit in and I had to go into my work bag like I was I had my bag as was coming from work directly when I went home so I just grabbed the bag so I went into my bag and I got her two plastic bags and I said well here you can vomit I have the baby I have the tank I have his bag and I'm here with him. I said, what do I do though? I saw you doing the pump. What rhythm, what were you using? Is it one, two? How do I pump this bag? She said to me, don't worry about that ice station. Just place the, the thing over his face, over his nose. And but I said, but down there, I heard the doctors telling you, you need to pump because him can't breathe on him own. So I can make him breathe on his own now. She's like, don't worry about that. Just put it over his face. <laughs> I said, all right, no problem. When I went, reached to the to the Milton Cato hospital now and I, I rushed out because she was lying down on the bed she couldn't move and the other young nurse that came with me she wasn't in her heaven so they they they, they wasn't like all there whatever was happening it took their mind away because she said she the, the doctor that came up with me said she felt like she could have checked herself into the hospital as well because she wasn't feeling that good and now I'm left with my son in my arm running to the emergency asking for a doctor to come and pump him and do what they can and when I when I got there now in the emergency they said to me um we're gonna have to get a doctor from the NICU to come up so you're gonna have to give it a five ten minutes I said, listen to me, the baby, his breast shut down on the way because she had the back pumping and the, 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 I explained to them the nurse faint, wanted to faint. She was passing out. So I don't know if it, probably his breast just shut down for a bit and you guys can do something to get him back up. But I don't think he's breathing. And when they checked him, now one of the nurse, one of the doctors again from the same team from the NICU came up. And he said to me, the, where, the, where this baby here dead? I said, Mike, how do you know my child is dead? You did not even check that baby. What are you saying to me? I said, that's what you do. You you, you saw a baby you, you lying there. You never checked him. You never pumped. You never tried anything. But you, 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 you're you declaring him dead. Is you him? He said to me, okay, give me something. Let me put it in his mouth and check him and pump him a bit. And then he started pumping and doing whatever he can. Within uh, five minutes, you know, he pumped a little. And then he's like, okay, mommy. I'm sorry to tell you, your baby passed right there and then. I said, all right, I hear you. I said, it's not normal. So can I have some time with him? And yes, yes, you go ahead with have some time. And I, I continue to pump that baby for almost an hour, just pumping and blowing, pumping. Because I never, I never fig I figured that it wasn't enough what the doctor did there he because he didn't show no form of compassion nothing he he just dwelt with it because he knew me as well he knew me from the same team and he said to me um but give her as much time and i i continue to pump my son pump my son and um i recognized like when i was putting my fingers in the mouth to open the mouth because i was opening the mouth and i realized it, it was becoming fixed and i tried to push my fingers through the gum but then I realized his gum was shut tight and I didn't want to choke his, his gum with my nails. So I pulled back and I stopped because my fingers could not go past his gum. You know? Mm. Yeah, so that is what happened. I could not go past the gum and I felt a lot of, I felt pain. I felt hurt in the sense that he, this is happening this is the first time I'm dwelling with a dead person and it is actually my son, my young son. And this is so strange. It is too strange for me. Then right there and then they said to me, uh, Mommy, you're going to have to excuse me because after a while they gave me some time with it. They said, we're going to wrap him up and I don't know if you can actually face this. And I said, I want to be able to face everything. Okay, from here, I'm going to face it all. Don't worry. I, I want to see what you guys are doing. And then they wrapped him up and came in the mark to the back. But I said to my partner, you know what is going to happen here right now? When I'm... I went home and uh, the, the energy said to me, I just look into the baby bag and research and read what they give, what they give you. Say, so look into the baby bag. So when I look into the baby bag and I open up the letters, then that is when I saw that my baby up upon birth right one hour after they tested him and they tested his 
blood and they claim that they give him all sort of medicine they claim that this and that was wrong with him they claim that he was septic he had presumed they had presumed sepsis and they, they you know conditions beyond that i was not told about so i said okay i never knew this was happening i thought it was just like the sugar doran 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 give us some love doran doran mommy doran sorry sweetheart sorry Ralph. sorry just in the road and a pit bull just came out a pit bull sorry my people and tanti is getting scared sometimes so, not to get scared um... it's a big pit bull but Yes, just at the roadside where I'm standing, a pit bull just ran out. Yeah, from the neighbors. Yeah, then the grandma, granny, the tante is walking with me, an older lady, and she's getting scared. So the dog came and just gave us some love, and I told her not to be frightened, not to be afraid. Don't be scared. Don't show the dog fear. Anyways, Rasta, sorry about that. Back to our story. So when I went home and I found the letter, now and the letter was showing me. I know, I'm pressed. Let, let me ask the eye this. Um... Yes. So the, the 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 letter that you that you receive, um, because mm-hmm. I, I remember you expressing that the lady, um, said to you that you you you, you should bring it back, um, at, yes. at at some point. Yes. Um. So I would have wh- I would have brought back that letter and given it over to one of the doctors. Mm-hmm. So had I have done that, I would not have known what was happening, what went on with my child. I wouldn't be given no, no, no evidence as to what went on. I wouldn't know. I would always know that he died and they would have just given me whatever they want to say to me. But because I had that record with all of the evidence, which is things that he has gone through and things that they never told me, that was clear sign to me that, you know, these people are wicked demonic people because why would you have such information, such deadly, deadly information and you kept it from me and misled me, misleading information, telling me it is something else while well, you have something else in that letter. That is what, that is the sickness of the whole matter. So you, right after birth, you diagnose the baby with sepsis. You know, sepsis is a crazy thing, brother. It is. To, it was told by the medical people that if you even suspect um, sepsis, scream it out to the parents. Scream it as loud as you can to that parent. Let the parent know because this is a serious condition that can just come upon anyone and it can turn you into like a zombie. That's why my son turned like that within a quick time. He turned from normal to like a, 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 a zombie. And so that what, is what happened when what, you have what, sepsis. What you're saying is um there, there's a fault there's a there's a fault on um on on the hospital side. Yes, of, please, of, of, yes. Of, of and it not was not just like a fault that of not of it not was making a willing, the eye aware that um um, yes, a willing act. It was a willing, it was a willful act. It, it, this is the whole thing that making it really dirty, you know. It is a willful act. Discrimination against me in the highest way, brother. Because when I met up with this young doctor that discharged me, we met face to face. I checked every single one of them down. I went personal one-on-one with two, with two out of the nurses. I've sent messages to these people th- that I couldn't get to with friends that I know. I even went to the doctor's church where she was singing and I called her out in front of her pastor, begging her. I said to her, she's a murderer. She killed my son. I never hold back. I never hold back from what I, what I knew. I never hold back. I never hold back. Yes, thank you. Yes, I never ever hold back from the truth, you know, and I I went to her and I said to her right in front of her members, you got to let your members and your friends and them know that you're there singing and clapping and cheering for God. But who God are you serving after you put your hands to murdering my son? She said to me, I Chishan, oh my God, do you believe that I killed your baby? I said to her, lady, lady, I don't believe, I know. And you know it too. And all she did was hang her head down to the ground. All she did was hang her head down to the ground. She said, Jishan, I'm hurting. I said, I'm hurting too, darling. It's my son. I'm hurting. And I said, you should have never put your hand to such a crime, you know. She's not saying no. She's not saying anything. I've been accusing these people and I've been bringing out to them the whole, in, from, in my whole country and every station, that these people 
planned this murder on my son. It was a planned, willful act. It was a willful act. It was something to teach me a lesson. You know, because that was what well, well, was told um, to me. If well, I come back, why, why, yes, please. Why, why would they want to teach you a lesson? Why, why, why? Well, you, this is the whole. P- why you think uh, that? Well, right. well, in my point of view, it is something that is bigger than I. Mm. It is something that is greater than I, in the sense of that. It's it's a joint force combination, and it is something that is, is to me is from it's it's from somewhere that I can't tell you where it's coming from, but it is something that is well set and was well planned and was just for me. That is why I was the only mother at that time, and that word that went through that and all other mothers that was there. There was even sick people that I know that I was helping. There were mother there that could not have had a baby for years and I have given them medicine and then the womb were clear and they were able to have babies. And I was there with mothers like that there. Mothers who took my medicine and got pregnant. And these are the testimonies in the land that me saying it. There's t- tons of people here that once can come and ask the question as to what I gave them and what, what worked for them. You know, so I know if this thing is so, coming from so, somewhere, it's like someone trying to tell me to to humble myself in what I am doing, into as to what you know, as to humble yourself. You you you, you said <laughs> you said earlier um, about curing um, um, HIV. HIV, yeah, yes, and, and, and yes. And this is serious, you know, Rasta, because I've worked along with the lady and the lady was pretty much like she was covered in like sores on her body and she was constantly scratching, scratching. And she came to me one day and she said to me, I want to tell you something amongst everyone. You know, I am HIV positive and I need help and I, I, I my spirit trusts you well. Can you help me? And I said, well, mama. I've never worked this deep and in, this intense, but I can do something to the powers of the almighty. I will do something and I will come. I will, we will work together and we can try this. And then we see how God will work it out. How the most I will work it out for you. And we did one year of cleansing of virus and all different sort of things that we use and change up the diet and everything. And then when she went back to the doctor after a year, they told her it was inconclusive when she did the test and she tested again and they tested. And they told her, yes, I'm coming. Definitely. So she said to me, yes. Um, I have a paper to show you my sister and I, I, I read the document from the doctor saying that she was clear from this sickness so she's no longer HIV positive she um, eventually got a brethren uh, a, a, a man by her side and she's been clean ever since so I know that it's the herbs that work it wasn't I that did anything really it was the most I works because them said the herbs is for the healing and the lady was healed so with my faith in in in, in in, in God, in the Almighty, the Most High Father, it, with my faith in Him and I see in these things, man, I, it's a different world to me. It's a whole different experience. So I can see where others who are in a particular field will be threatened by by but by I because it's a light. And I figure that want me to call you. All right, I figure that I am. I, you know, I was discriminated so, so, against so, so, very so very that's much. That's why you think um, someone would come at you in 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 such a Definitely. way. Definitely. Definitely, definitely. When your eyes are open, you become a threat. You know, you become a threat to the status quo. It's natural because the things that the Father has given us naturally. We don't have to go through a whole lot of things and bow down to no one and no, 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 no fate deity to get what we get. And we don't have to join with no evil forces to get what we get. We are already blessed by the Most High, so we're just having a natural free experience with the Almighty. So we don't have no fear in nothing that this going to go wrong and that going to go wrong. From your walking with John the Almighty, everything everything bless. I know that. We 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 we, we here for a time and we just passing through. Every man will be make that transition. Some will not see whatever. Some will not face and go through. We don't know what it's like. The most I have the, them knowledge. That when man transition and man move forward from the flesh, man will have that eternal liberty in this in the spirit realm. You know, so see. now that my son have passed away and I've gone through that experience. It did a great deal for me because upon that, the most I took I up on a level within my spiritual realm and showed me everything and all thing. And I am confident as to what I am saying. And the truth is with I, because I have the evidence and the facts. This is what I have. 
this is what I have. That's why I, I can speak so clear. I can speak so strong and I can bring the accusation to them like that. And my country, people in my country, in high society, I know that they know what I'm saying is truth. I know what they're saying because my son is on, in the funeral home for over two years now. Two years spent ice with him belly busting and you saw maybe the eye saw a pic that I share with the eye. How graphic and nasty that was to give him my little son like that. When they, when they confront the news, people confronted the hospital and the administrator. The administrator could not have said much. And she said, oh, baby's body soft and they had it there. They had no cooling system. They had him there just to rotten. They wanted to make sure to hide all of the evidence from in my son's body and for my son to rotten down so I have nothing. But here's the last first the Almighty make it possible because him allow me and guided me to make me put the baby in the funeral home and to even warn the funeral home of putting the hand to any criminal activity by trying to make anything go wrong with this body. Because I found certain things that was going on and I spoke to the people there and they had to just hold itself, okay? People are wondering how come my baby's still there. And how come the funeral home and he and the burial and them things? I said, no, me, the funeral home, no, and I know, and we know it is a murder. So it, nothing cannot happen until. I already went to the police and I, I, I reported the murder to the police. And the police started an investigation into the murder of the baby. And as soon as the police entered the hospital and start asking the question, the administrator wanted to know if the DPP was leading this investigation. The DPP is the same person who is going to allow me to say whether or not I have a, a, a case in the courthouse. They are working together. Okay, it's so one it's, system, it's, one so, people. So, um, is, is, is it a, you, what, you, you taking out a lawsuit against them or... Well, I, yes, I did. I went in to get that. I have a lawyer. I had still the lawyers there. But what they were saying to me, this is, uh, this is something that was done with them. And it was done privately because they, I went in and I, as I said, I reported the murder. And the police was on the case investigating the, the surgeon. And he was pretty open-minded and um, kind as well. The, and he felt my pain. Because in order for me to get that, to get that investigation done you know it wasn't an easy thing you know i had to find my way in order to get that done they, they tried to block me at the police station when i was going one of the police who knew me as a school we went to school together back then he was the one that stood up and said no it ain't happening today let the lady go through because they did not want me to go to make that report so they, he almost got himself in trouble trying to get me to the next level just to make a report to the police when i went there the officer turned his back on me and I had to tell the officer, face me. I said, no, you look wrong and face me and give me your name and your badge number. I said, too much of stripping is going on. I came to report a murder. And it was the same day that the volcano blew on. It was the same day that the, the La Soufre volcano has erupted. And you know, that is the day that I went in. Because that is the day that I felt strongest. Because I know that's a job. You have to work something for her, you know, I you, Yeah, them have to speak to me, you know, and it's only through them things that yeah, I could speak to me, through the whirlwind, through the volcano, through the storm. That is how I connect to my ancestors, okay? And when they touch my son like that, and I know it is a murder, I would not just be coming out like this and accusing no one. It's because I have enough evidence and facts and truth. And most of the people here are saying to me, hey, you know what's happening there when you know that, you know, they're going to want to kill you. I say, well, I, they could do what they have to do. They set themselves because these people in high places and they have their friends and they don't want to come down and face this criminal vibration because there's a criminal activity that took place with a group of them. And they, they plan to do this thing to the baby and I'm confident. That's why after two years, they couldn't say nothing to me. None of them never say anything, you know, Rasta. The minister held cramp. Prime Minister, what he said, he, I went to his office myself and I asked for an appointment to see him and I made a video early, early addressing the Prime Minister as to looking into the matter because I have my son in Canada who is friends with his children as well, who knows them. And even his daughter, my son knew his daughter as well. They, they went to school back then when my son was here from Canada. And they, they, they kind of, as I say, young people, they would have joined together and, you know, have a little fun together. Mm -hmm. And um, to see that, I reach out to the Prime Minister here, and he never really said nothing to me. None of them ever said anything. It was only God when Friday, the opposition, he was the one, he met me in the road while I was protesting. While they were protesting, I actually joined the protest. 
hunting for seeking for justice for my son as well and one of them another one from the ndp who is whose name a lady whose name is um Luzet king she already she did a program with me as well and um ndp did give me a little space to kind of express myself and the lawyer was saying to me not for the lawyers they were afraid they most likely it's it's gonna be a way for them to pick the case up because they just have no it's real and we don't they don't know what gonna happen when they, if this case really gets into the court system if it really gets in there because there's enough evidence to put away people if there's enough i mean i can't make this be like no secret thing eh? and i ain't gonna hide and i ain't gonna run i can stand up right here with the most high energy and i am going to fight my battle and that's why i'm very thankful for the opportunity which now as i said his majesty himself put the eye place the eye at this level at this place at this time on the air giving the eye everything that is due to the eye so this war can be done as to we the african people we are very resilient and we don't back down and we will fight to the very end for what That's is right so if i have the truth with me i'm not gonna back down I will fight for what is right. And my fight is not just for me only. It is for all the other mothers and young daughters that will have to use that same institution and for them to make changes like that, not to put people and ones like that to get the right people in them tender spot where, you know, God is entering himself. Because through the babies, is God in flesh, them innocent. Mm -hmm. Is the most himself right there mm -hmm. in that stage. You manifest. You don't want to try to take the life when the most I send the life. You have to make sure that that life you go on you assist that life you don't just try set up a mother it was too much if you listen to the story well there was too much miss miss as you said breaking of the rules then okay mishaps it's just mishap mishap for professionals it shouldn't be like that you should not have lied to me in the first place by telling me something else is wrong with my baby from the real truth and what you're hiding from me it will slowly manifest itself and take my baby life why not share that with me instead of telling me something else and then by telling me again if i were to come back to have another baby that the same thing will happen to me that is something clearly showing and i have i've reported this data to the to the authorities and to the administrator and they said they were gonna have a meeting the hospital itself tell the ministry of health that they gotta come forward because they can't handle she cannot handle the questions and what is happening she's gonna need the ministry to step stand with her the administrator and they never assisted her you know they never really came and give her the strength mm -hmm. nothing really pushed everybody kind of just hold back held back held back but then my baby's on ice that is the whole point and then i'm just not holding the baby there for no reason it is a murder case and i need i need i need ones all over the world with a heart to don't just allow this situation and this to go wrong this is too much this is a big 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 thing which i know so, for sure that doctors and nurses willingly willfully stop the life of the baby so, um, Set him up what, so he what, can die what, 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 what one of the reason um why yeah uh, uh, one of the reasons why you link Iron Man Zane is to really get the word out there but also to um, link up with the Ethiopian World Federation, right? Yes, please. Yes, I. Rastafari. Right. Yes. Yes, I, Rasta. Rasta, right now, I am, I'm, I'm, I'm being honest. I, it, my, my wall is so different. It's like seeing my son on ice and because I, I i call as often and i have a visit to visit him again tomorrow i will go and i will record my son as to how the changes how i see things happening around him even in this stage even in death i still make sure to keep track of him because he's my responsibility okay though the funeral home is holding him they only as i say assisting based on the fact that if they know that something wrong was done to this child it's not ordinary even the young man from the funeral home who went for the baby he fell down in the burying ground when he was moving my son he dropped on his knees and screamed like a child he said to him to me that never happened in my life something different happened to this child and that is what she was that is what he said to me he screamed like a child in the a big man dropped down on his knees and fall out oh most i god oh god because he know he said something's changed all my life i work in here i never had this feeling to drop on my knees but this child here something different around this child 
I saw them, man. They set them up. All they had to, to do was to tell me the truth and say, Trisha, hey, this is what happened to the baby. And let us walk it out so my child could have been here to, the, to live his life. Why set me up like that? Mm. Why do that? You know, and then the child yeah, suffered, man. you know. Remember, this child was dying. He was being eaten. Like, bacteria full in, eating him out. Mm -mm. So, and the boy was so beautiful. Just a... Uh, so beautiful so powerful oh my goodness why did they take him from me that that's wrong rasta rastafari yes man he said last watch it's not an easy thing rasta Rasta, i could say these words to you it's wrong a wrong was done and it's not like i'm just talking out looking for some i have all of the evidence that is my point i even have recordings of them speaking with me and in them recordings it's deadly when you hear for yourself rasta we go on there you will just smile it's like his majesty don't give it away him don't give me the whole thing it's for them to recognize as my people and to come forward because it ain't going no thing and be something i tell you this one is a different one this is a different thing, and this one is for the whole world. It's not even for St. Vincent alone. You cannot just take somebody's child, Rasta, Rasta, nobody can just come and take your little son or your little daughter and take them, and which is kind of professional people, you take them in to see the doctor, and the doctor them found out that your little son or little daughter have a condition, a serious condition that will kill it, and then tell you something else, Rasta, and mislead you. Tell you a whole different thing. That is, what is that, that is Rasta? terrible. Come on, Rasta man. And they never give the young man him. You see everything them write in the report. It's a big lie because they never choke the baby. The baby never even get one choke. Mm -hmm. Not one. So what they did to him, they found everything. They give him no medicine. And then up on that, oh, you know them wicked again, Rasta. They came to me you now asking me, like my other children. Or are you going to be refusing the antibiotic shot like the other children? Why would you come to me and ask me such a stupid question after you don't claim that you chuck him up with all sort of antibiotics and them thingy? You see, but you never showed that to me. You put that in the letter for me to bring back to you, but then in front of my face, you make it look like if I just refuse the, you refuse the one shot because the reason being why I refused that, it was the norm. It was the step that I would take with my other children. So they played the same game like it was normal to me, knowing that my baby was diagnosed by them and claimed to be treated and all that behind my back in secret. So they thought that I was gonna bring back that letter for them and to give them. So I wouldn't, I wanna know. I would have known anything. I wouldn't, because I would be lost. Because I didn't look into. I just passed by the letter. You understand? But I got, the most I see last year, I say hold that, keep that there, because everything inside of that's what hold them. That's why they can't say nothing to me. Imagine me as an individual could stand up to my in my country and tell the doctors and the police and everyone in my country that my child was murdered by these particular people, individuals. And I went and read the station everywhere, and not one of them could come and say. To me, I said, well, sue me because it's defamation, a character. I, I will offer the item to take me into the into the court. Sue me. No one came. Everybody just stand, as I said, dignify silence. So they're hoping that it will go away. But here, Selassie, if I say no, Empress men and say no, I say no. They will have to line me up in, in front in the streets here. They will going to take me, my son, my king, my me, other children, and they will have to put a bullet in all of us in front of the Vincentian people. Because they don't come secret. Don't come secret to my home to try and kill me. I don't feel safe. That is why I'm reaching out to my African brothers and sisters. I want once to look into this. Please. I am reaching out to the conscience of the world. Asking them, this is not an ordinary thing. It is not a good thing. There's no way in life that I can have so much evidence. Even the police know it. Commissioner know it. The prime minister know it. But yet they want me to just be silent and just sweep it under the rug. I can't. Yes, greetings, sister. Yes, please. I can't, brother. Rasta. Just I can't. And when you look at I save your little body from the ice, and you know what I mean? You see, this is a being, this is flesh and blood, I yeah. This youth man had a whole life, yeah. It wasn't no, it wasn't that he was no coming. The youth man went through a whole heap of things before you could come and be able to come out of your mother's womb. You have to go through so much a process from that little seed, from that egg, and from all the process where you take the youth man for fine and to come full in them fullness and overcome so much. For just set him up for dying, I feel I want for him. 
I feel that one for him because I have other children and all my other children, Rastafari, is so beautiful, so powerful. If you see all my sons, no fault, Rasta, beautiful, strong and loving youths. So why this little one that came in, in, in with them when my eye was closed? Why this little one have to suffer and die? And, and, and all the lies that they said to me because it was me, Rasta, they had to come before I to see what they were saying and I saw the nasty lie, the wickedness that they done to the youth man. That is why I am so hot. I am so hot and I say, to, I reach out, I say to myself, there's no man, everybody cannot be sleeping, never mind what are going on in the world today and we see all the mishaps and all the wickedness and all we going on and the evils of the world. This world is still run by the highest energy and order. That is why life, that is why life is still here. You know, yes, so for uh, me, I say more life, more strength, more prosperity, and in order for that to go forward, and in order for me to go forward, I and I need justice. I and I need the people them to just face it now. I know it's a wicked wall, and now when it says a wicked wall, a lot of things that is wrong and negative is like the wrong has become yeah. right and the right has become wrong. But in, until really? we don't stand up and come forward and fight for what is right, we're gonna happen to the youths. We're gonna happen to our future. Eh? Yeah, it's a serious thing, you know? Rasta? Yeah, man. Rasta is a serious, serious thing. thing. Yeah, man. You can't just hurt me so, Rasta. Rasta, I can't. It's like my it's it's everything done thing. in the sense that I it's can't. It's a serious thing. Yes, I. Uh, you uh, man suffer, no, Rasta. Yeah. Rasta um, suffered. He suffered. I watch him fighting a Rasta, man. I saw the youth man ever see fight and even them say that. To live three months without any kind of medicine in your body and to still survive and try for hold on to life. You know? And for just because they never get that, they never they never tell me what I go on with the youth man. They never tell me they hide they hid it from me. In the end is when they telling me if I come back, the one that if me come back there, the same thing go happen. Come, if, you, if you come back in this hospital to have baby number eight, same thing will happen to you. I said, but how are you so sure and confident that this same thing will happen to me? She said, because I'm telling you. So I don't get the warning. I don't feel safe. And even the nurse that came up with me on the, on the, on the boat, on the plane, when I was having the baby, too, I explained to the media as to what happened there. When I was, while I was walking one day here in the town, I, I met her after everything and I smiled because, you know, I don't forgive. Forgiveness is with me. I don't hold no one to anything. Once I don't burn the fire, I already explained myself to you. I let go and I just keep living with the love. So it's up to you now for fix yourself, but I agree. So now when I saw that nurse and she was walking, I said hi to her and I just started smiling and giving her love. And she said to me, oh, I Trishan, she was smiling too, but then she said, listen to me. I can't laugh with you. I can't smile with you. I don't want to talk to you. I said, boy, listen to me. You are in the, you're, you're a nurse. And if anything went wrong with my children, I have to come in to see you right now. So me and you is at war. So I say you hold me, you holding enmity against me. You you angry at me for, t for for speaking out the truth, and you guys are angry because I came to the media and to see what I have to see because I can't do with this in darkness. This is a public affair. It was done in a public place. Okay, so they say it can't be no secret with me and the and 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 them dwelling like that. You know. Yeah. Open, open, Rasta, open. Yeah. And I can't do this thing. I can't do it alone. And mm. even if my life, even the worst thing, my life, I know he's still last year, first year, my ten impressed men is. When revenge, the revenge will come upon them. For these people, life will not be good. Because how do they expect for Jah to bless the daughters? I met her. I say, do you want to have children? Say, well, if you want to have children, do you know that what you did to that child, you think ja, the Almighty cite you? And, and me and you know what you did. I, I, I spoke to each and every one of them, as I tell you, individually. And I have recordings that I will send to the Jed. So the Jed will get to get the, the, the fullness of this thing, yeah? Mm -hmm. You will get to get the fullness more and more, Rasta. Rasta for... Uh... Yeah, I've, I'm hot though. I'm really hot. And, and, and the fact that I'm in a country with so much people, so much people, and people will just look and many mothers cry with me, you know. I know a lot of mothers cry. I've seen mothers fell to the ground and roll, and they say, I know we're saying it's the truth. And I'm hurt for you. A lot of people praying in the country for me. And I, I got good support in the sense from the people here. A lot of people cried with me. And they realized, you know, that it ain't, it ain't a good thing. Even the funeral home where I have the baby, 
when I put him there, I told the hospital I would never ever pay them a cent. I would never ever put money into their hands for something that they did. They, they, if you took my child, why, why would I want to pay you? I said, I would never do that. Never. So I, may, I make sure to tell them the truth as to how I stay. I'm not going to be doing nothing. No, 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 no. It ain't going so. There's no way in the world that I'm going to be doing anything then when you guys know you guys took my child. I'm angry at you all for doing that. They never even wanted to hand my son body over to me. And I had to... I had to let them know that they were um, discriminating against me and they were violating the natural laws. And then that was a different thing. And that's when they, they said to me, okay, then yeah, come and get him. So you can't have my baby, the rotten in, knowing that he's rotten in. And a, as a hospital, that is what you guys keep. The, you told me that everything is okay with the baby and he will be kept there for as long as he will be safe. And within a few months, they had him in a bed drawer, in a heated mug. The mug had no ice. Just a hot room, hotter than this, hotter than than the outside that I'm walking. When you go into the room, it's like a hot room where you have dead bodies just in a bed drawer. When you go in, you smell the scent. When I look at all them little babies, little boys and little girls, oh, rasta me belly move one one upon another, and my own my own just as wet and dripping on each other. So, so this is how you store your dead in a bed with others rotting. In. This thing is nasty. That's the man. Rasta, how can you take my baby and put my baby through that? That 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 means something to me. That body, that booty, I honor it. That I honor my dead. You can't just take my son and put him down like that. And I never give them no permission to go into my son's body and cut him down. The last time when I go there, you know, listen to me, they continue with the fight, you know. I went to the funeral home and I had to tell the funeral home, be careful. I had to warn them. Because they, they said, took my son off of the ice. And I said, why they, are you taking my child off the ice? They didn't have no reason. You understand? I said, that can't happen. I don't know what you are telling them that. I said, if you're trying to do this thing, continue your effort to run down my child, it will not work. Put back the child on ice and don't ever do it again. Don't ever do it. Because I'm them, everybody, I'm, I'm watching everyone. Because I know what happened, I know they will love this thing to just go away with us. Hey, see, last if I say the Almighty, and I say, and I must see, I must see that the, the justice for the youth, man, which is them have to look into this and have to dwell with it. You can't just hide, you can't run. There's no running and no hiding. And I need to, that's why I say I'm connecting to my African diaspora. I'm looking for the people, no matter. Africa and whoever you are, once you're being that has a life and you are, you're conscious of truth and reality, I'm, I'm hoping that, trusting that ones and ones will do what they can to even assist, not me, but assist, I save you. The little son that suffered is him. I do these things for, because I know his spirit will feel good to know that his mother didn't just leave him up like that. No, because he fought, he fought a great battle as a little baby tiny little boy just fighting the way and they saw the man they saw his strength as well they saw it they know because other babies most like he would have done kick out by by a month of not having mess he, he maintained for three months and had it had i known like that was happening to him i would if they had it tell me like told me from the beginning okay this is what was happening to your son then i would have been seeing whatever signs and whatever, you know, symptoms that would have been showing itself for me to know, well, here, with sepsis and with this condition, this and that can happen. So these are the signs as a naturalist. I would, but they never gave me nothing. All they gave me was older man sugar. So how can you mislead a mother like that, knowing that my baby is sep has sepsis? Hmm? How can you do that? How can you? Yeah, you release me based thing. on the knowledge is just sugar knowing that this condition if not treated the baby will die within three months and he did Damn. no and here what they have my number you know they have all of my numbers they have numbers to my family as uh, they have numbers to my to my own number they had my the kingman number and i still give them others family so if there was anything that was going on and they need to contact me they could have contacted me by all of my numbers because i give them everything and everything is on the file so why didn't they contact me if they see me being in my own natural way say i trish and Silasi, bring that baby in because you do you know what you're playing with they never send nothing to me 
nothing knowing that they have my numbers and if this was any concern great concern to them you don't think they would have contacted me to let me know that hey this is not something that you can handle bringing the child because the child will need or he will die they never said nothing to me they said nothing all they tell me is to well, I put the baby sugar and make sure get his sugar and get his eyes and then white up because he may get a little genders. And if you look at the baby eyes, the baby eyes as white as watch, white as cloud, white. And 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 then because I was taking him out in the sun and I was doing my thing, because that was my seventh son. I had six other experiences with sons as well, and who all is a perfectly healthy and beautiful. The only one that they had access to, which is now I was asleep, and that's the only one. And if you notice from the beginning, how they moved it, it was all outside the rules and the regulations of the hospital. That is what the administrator said to me. She said to me, if what you're saying to me is so now, these people went out of bond and they went, they acted outside the rule and regulation of the hospital. And she was so hurt for me. She said that to me. But what can she do? She does her work and it's one order, it's one system. I trust in His Majesty and the I, I and, and all of I and I to, to really uplift I Savior. Don't let, don't let him go down so because it's the same fight. I will fight for any one of the I them. Anyone that reach I and touch. Once you reach I, that means it's Jah. And you see me and the I connecting and the many ones that are listening to me. I know it's a beautiful program and it will reach without to reach. And I'm saying to anyone, anyone that is listening and who, 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 who can actually feel and, and sensitize with me and to see what I'm going through, please, whatever way you can assist, in what, even if it's just true knowledge, something that you can say to me, just please, you know, stand with I, stand with I, please. Because I know in the end of it, justice will come and it will be a sweet day. It will be a glorious day. It will be something that never happened so before but i am going to continue to fight this battle i told my son that whenever i go and visit him at the funeral home i said son i could never watch with your eyes out and your tongue out and all of that i can't that's the far eye <laughs> majesty give her the strength and her majesty i am it ain't an easy thing rasta because then tomorrow i have an appointment to go and see him <sighs> it's not easy Journey. Rasta, mm. I cry out to His Majesty. Rasta, by the time I bow, I drop to the ground and I just, I just visualize His Majesty and Her Majesty just had to touch me, hold me, and I felt the presence. I watched. I couldn't even find the tears. I'm trying to cry and couldn't cry, Rasta. I was trying to bring the tears out and it, I, I dig so deep and it just couldn't happen. <laughs> so I just had to walk and hold. A vibration, breathe in and breathe out and watch the mystic of life. Then I realize what evil is, man, how evil is and how we can really affect a one. But I make that my strength still in a, I still stand firm because it doesn't distract me from doing what I have to do with others and making sure that I stay within my heavens and to not to be distracted by anything and not to allow anything to this, you know, to... Mm -hmm. deter me from the path that I am on. I know it's a natural path. I know it's a spiritual path. And it's a beautiful path. And it's the path that leads on to our life and to our truth. And if this is my plight and in my time, I stand Rastafari to whatever the situation. And just to make sure that right is not right and wrong is wrong. And I stand for justice for my little son. He cannot speak for himself. His, him is beyond the flesh right now. He's on the on a realm that he's more free. I know that him is safe because him has not committed any kind of nasty crime. Do him is just an innocent baby, okay? Straight from the heavens back to the heavens. Yes, I. So I don't That's have no so trouble because my my son never live on earth. Him never even walk the earth. Him never even go down to touch earth. Him that pure. Him. Yes, I'm very impressed. Yes, yes, I. I. Yeah, man. Yes, well, I. Yes, man. Yes, man. Um, yes, yeah, Rebel I feel the pain. Brother, well, it was nice, you know, because I was. Yes, I, Rasta. Yeah, I feel yes, the I. pain. I, and, I thank you. You know, and I, 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 I pray that um, there I can get some, you know, I mean, some assistance from, you know, other ones out there, support wise and thing, you know, ones can call the I, you know, try and reach yes, out to I. the eye still. Yeah. I will, that's I need it. 
I need the strength. I need it. And it's more sin knowledge yeah. in because I'm willing. I'm willing and ready to make any move. Once it is a righteous move, I'm willing and ready. For the yes, youth, sir. man, I'm going all the way through. Yes. All the way through, Rasta. Yes, son, I remember Empress. Yeah, man. So, yeah, we give thanks, um, you know, for the eye um, sharing, you know, with, with, with the masses, with the world at large still. And as I say, um, whatever the eye say and, you know, whichever way it, it can assist a one to said way and a one can assist, you know, would be um, yes, grateful for that still. But we give yes, thanks. Yes, um, yeah, we yes, give man. yeah we give thanks to the eye taking the time still you know cause due to time you know but um yeah say say what the eye saying and you know we we're yeah gonna see I was that. saying I was saying I'm gonna make the the documents available which I'll be sending to the eye and the eye can always have you know that in the eye archive as to the eye can see the fullness for the eye self because I would love for the eye to see and it's only true documentation which I have which all of the evidence that I can forward on to the eye I know the pics are very graphic so I will refuse the pic but I will send you pic of him when he was beautiful and alive and you get to see his beautiful eyes and see him strength with my eyes so yes Rasta Rasta right now it just feel like it just feel the way it was a man because it, it's not a good thing Rasta. It, it's not easy to watch your little newborn just bust down i'm telling you just bust down and what they went into him for it doesn't make sense and when you get to hear the the clipping which is the message that i've recorded with me and the, the pathologist then you know oh my goodness Rasta is more to it it's plenty to it because i will not be able to say everything here but as you know, I will connect with you and we'll be able to keep this going on and because the world will have to witness with me and share that joy with me. Because I will have to put away my child and then the way in which I'm going to put him away, I'm not going to put him into the earth. I will have ways of dwelling with him. Maybe may, may be a cremation ceremony, but there's a ceremony that must go on for him. I just cannot have him waiting. So that is why you see I am thanking you too, Rasta, at this time to for the opportunity you know for me to be able to bring my story and to share the story again i've shared the story several times and every time i share the story it's like it's it, it's it, it never i'm never getting wary i can't get wary because i ain't tired you know as i know it's the truth and the reality of as to what i am facing and living right now and i will love for my son like anyone else to be able to go you know to be sent off and that is why I'm hurting as well. Him just waiting on ice. After him done gone to all them wickedness there. You want to tell me now I'm still up on ice because I can't move him until I get the attention of the Prime Minister. You know, I want the Prime Minister to pay me some attention in my own land. I try reaching out and I'm not going to force him. I want him to come on to I. Because right now in St. Vincent, five person die accidentally. And the Prime Minister has taken it up on his, as a duty to look forward and to look out and to share compassion and, you know, sympathize with the other. And I'm a mother that was crying for, 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 for years, trying to get the man attention. And all the man is saying to me to drop off. I said, no, I cannot drop off. No form of documents. I wanted to see you and I still continue in the country if it's so hard. If there's one that can say, well, Prime Minister, give that woman some attention and let me dwell with it as a people. Don't worry about the shame. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about country and country coming down. It's the fact that we country going up because right now is a time that the Prime Minister could look into this matter, make a right, you know, choice and to see, investigate the thing and make. Then they will get to know what really went on. Don't just yes, take sir. my word for it. I said, go through the investigation. I yes, will be sir. able to lead you I, because I'm the one who, I'm the main witness. So I can lead you as to what went on. You know, yes, but me just I will I will I will need that closure, man. I need to move forward with my life. I need to, you know, do I have other children there and the children as well, Ocean, Johannes, Selassie and Sahale, I tell Sahale. And these are children that, that are there that love their brother. As I said, we are a very tight, compact family, like our family is closely knitted. And for them to lose their brother like that, it was not easy thing for them. And they have gone through many, you know, perplexes and com you could have seen where the children was just like out of it because they, they didn't really understand how that it just come upon them. So 
like that and this they get to witness when the brother was fighting for his life and everything like that and it's not easy they know that he's in the funeral home and they've they've seen the pictures with him busted open and they've been going through as well and i can see where they mind they need to be free from that as well and just live because they're just holding on holding on for us to dwell with the little brother and that's what they're saying mommy i know that we're waiting to dwell with i savior which is the little one so then we can actually move forward until then it's like we just keep waiting on the baby and we don't really know how to go far i say yes that is how it is we just keep waiting and i and i shall wait and have faith to the powers of the most high and yeah then we'll be able to see the brother go off and 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 move forward with our life yes i rasta rasta far right. Yes, man. Yes, yes, my sister. Well, give thanks. Um, you know, for there, I take your time. And, um, yes, I. Yeah. yeah, man. More love, more strength to the eye and the eye family. You know. And, um, yes, I, Rasta. I yeah. really appreciate your 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 strength as well, and your patience and your love. It is something that I'm saying that your name. When you have a name, and they say the name, you call by your name, just like His Majesty. When him took that throne, he say, hi, this is Lassie the first. And that is when ones would have learned at that time. That was the name. Yes, I. So they say, no, the eye name. When I saw the eye name and I saw the eye and I, the eye, it's a just star. Then I realized it is, it is really one that is, is, is majesty is holding there and close. Cause I work with energy. And the eye energy is so pure. What more? I cannot go beyond this. It is pure. It is divine. And the eye worthy. That is why His Majesty will have such a program on the air that will be touching many hearts all throughout this earth and giving the strength of life. And I greatly appreciate. Yes, I greatly appreciate you. Appreciate the moment, Jasta. I just stars. Yes, I give thanks. Yes, yes I. I. It's an honor and a privilege, my sister. And we give man, thanks. Yes, and man. Yes, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. So, more love, more strength. We'll keep in touch. Yes, we'll more keep love. In yes, touch. I. Definitely, Rasta. I for joy every moment of it in the sense that I was able to have a listening ear and to know that my, my voice is being heard by the many and the right ones that will be able to give a savior and to help to see justice for for the youth man because justice is something that we all should recognize that if we need it without justice there's no peace you understand so it come like your time like, your, like the, the torment uh, the burden of things it doesn't remove until we can see just justice let me say what is justice it is just balancing the thing you know as to the truth and that is what I have, blessings. That is what I have with me. I have the truth. I'm not trying to run down anyone. I'm not trying to fight no political warfare. I'm not trying to bring, listen to me, the people themselves. By your works, you shall be judged, and by your works, you shall get your pay. I don't have to fight anyone like that. All I am doing is walking my walk, knowing that I've been um, someone unfair me, or you can say, take something so precious away from me. And I'm just trying to get the attention onto the ones who is in position and can do something about it for them to really like don't just treat this thing lightly because the most high is alive and well and everything will be a thinking into account no matter who when how we all are just having an experience okay and if they say that there are people that have a spirit and believe in the true and living god we know that there's judgment for these things and if i'm coming out and i'm being so loud about something and i'm screaming i'm crying it's like no one is hearing me but i know that there's one that hear me and, and that is hearing me because for you I, as i said just uh, and the others but the sister in from I, I give thanks i'm telling you i feel good and I know why His Majesty would have done what he's done and by calling the ones and giving ones and ones who's willing the strength. Because once you're willing and as the will is the will. Once you're willing for something to happen, it will happen. You know, it's just that people sometimes just true is not there. They figure that that is not my problem. We're not gonna fight for that uh, the happening and it look again. But no, no, unless we don't come together and do these things and fight for each other and to see what it is and look into the matter for yourself and you know take interesting things that is of interest of his majesty his majesty is a man of life 
you know and then when you call then you say well okay i and i are cheering at the most i and i allow the most i to use this temple and for once to come and to unfair us we can we have to fight us as one as i mentioned before with the ethiopians we shall rise we shall stand together and defeat the enemy only together we can do it so that's why i trust in the unity i trust in the strength i trust in the love and i give thanks to the eye and i pray that his majesty continue to make this program progress and to go further and to reach higher heights yes just i yes, thank sir. you very very much yes sir give thanks yes sister yeah, man. yes man love, yes man blessings strength. and love to the yes and take man care of the yes sir and they are family. Yes, I will, Rasta. Definitely. And we will keep in touch, okay? Yes, I. Yeah, man. More love, more strength. Yes, man. More love. More love, more strength. And I'll be listening to the program later on. If it's going to be an air, I will get to listen forward to it, right? Rasta Farai. <laughs> yes, I. Yes, man. More love, just that. Rasta Farai. Yes, more I. Love and all the people that listen impressed. to the program and all the ones who be hearing it, more love and more strength while we fight this thing as a human, as I say, one humanity humanity right now is not i and the i and the different ones humanity is a chat and a hole before the for the energy of what you call that negative force is risen up on earth but yet the most high as i said him is in control because he always have the earth covered so no matter we rise up and we have a force we are able to conquer it through the powers of him and her you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. man. More love, yes, more strength, sir. honorable empress. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. yes man. More love, just more love, more love. Yes, sir. Uh- yes, honorable family. So, all right, this sir. Um, you know, very touching story. Um, from a sister. You know, what I mean, as the item can hear. Um, just give her some love and some support. If um, you know if they them can support her and assist her in any way, shape and form, yeah man, just link up and um, yeah, reach out. All right, so that's all we have time for. Um, they are them know so they are them can um, reason with we in the comment section. All right, so manners and respect, peace and love. All right, yeah man, Holy Manuel I, King Celestia I, Ja. Rastafari, cut and clear, jeans and sneer, pollution and atmosphere. Yes, I. I just thought the mindset. Smash that subscribe button. See you on the next video. I just thought the mindset.